so uh, so i mean so you you mentioned an, an interesting point right so what is this value of you know so if i write this as alpha times p yes you are clearly pointing out that alpha has to be less than has to be less than 1 1 right, right? in fact i can we can even extend this right mm -hmm. in this case one of the capacitors was discharged yeah. the other was charged yeah now if i were to imagine that both were charged yes my gut feeling mm -hmm. is that the voltage will be somewhere in between the two in between because the two. one of them has to charge the other exactly. till they reach some final value exactly so why don't we look at that okay. case sure. right so what you are saying is a very interesting problem now you are saying that i have uh C1. It's charged to some V1. Initially. Say, right? Okay. So maybe let's ah. draw the switch, exact yes. switch picture. Yes. Okay. To achieve that uh, state. Okay. I have this. I have C2, C1, C2. And I have a DC source, ideal DC source with infinite charge. Okay. Right. And I have ah. a third switch here. And a third DC voltage? And a, and a second, second DC, DC voltage. voltage. So this okay. is V1, this is V2, uh, so and two capacitors. So I have switch S1, S2, S3, controlled by signals phi1, phi2, and phi3. Perfect. Okay, so what we are going to do is, uh, in this case, I don't have to operate each switch independent. I mean, uh, mutually isolated from each other i can do phi 1 okay uh, turns on at 0 it's on for t1 okay and phi 2 has to be off at this stage yes right we don't want any interaction between the two capacitors yes but phi 3 can be on at the same time as phi 1. Oh, because phi 2 is open. The switch yes. is open. The two circuits are independent. Yeah. The two circuits are independent and therefore I will just say for the same time as, right? So now I have hmm. T1. Okay. Okay. And then after some time as usual, T2 and T3. Okay. We have these. Two capacitor charge sharing. Now, okay. so now what happens when phi 1 is on and phi 3 is on, you have two independent circuits, right? And so what will the final value on these capacitors be? So uh, at the end of uh, yeah, uh, T1. 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 V C okay. 1 of T equal to T1. Yes. Yeah. That is going to be V1. V1. Yes. And V C 2 of T equal to T T1 equal to V2. V2. Right? right. Yeah. Now we turn on phi 2 and we mm -hmm. want to see what happens to the yes. system. Right? So this will turn on like this. So this is C1 initially charged to V1. Yes. In brackets, I'm putting the initial charge. Right, that and that I mean at t equal to t two minus t two minus. That's what yes. I'm indicating there. C two yes. of v two. And that switch is controlled by phi two. This is controlled by phi two. Okay. Okay. So now what happens is you turn on phi two, and mm. what's your guess? <laughs> so we can apply again charge conservation. Yeah. So I know two things yeah. for the circuit. So charge always gets conserved because I don't have anything bringing in charge to the Correct. system. And I also know that if I wait for a long enough time, the two voltages have to be equal. Two voltages have to be equal. So exactly. these two concepts I can apply. You can apply. Because that's what we did the previous time as well. Maybe we should apply those apply two. Apply the same. But yeah. in which direction in the current ah, flow? It uh, depends on, earlier we had V1 and 0. Yeah. And the capacitor C1 charged the second capacitor. Yeah. Well, it depends on which one has the higher voltage. Exactly. So, current can flow only from high potential, potential to lower, lower potential, potential. Right. Mm. So, we'll assume here, if V1 greater than V2. Yes. Otherwise, the opposite is going to happen. Yes. Right. So, Correct. therefore, yes. <laughs> so, therefore, the initial... Okay, and initial we mean at T equal to T2 minus. Yes. Okay, initial charge in the system 
is simply C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2. Yes. Okay. Now, final. Ah. Okay. okay. At T equal to T3. So, you said that they will both come to the same voltage, right? That's when the current has to stop. Yes. Otherwise, yes. current will keep flowing. Yes. Right? So, it has to come to V final into yes. C1 plus C2. C2. Right. So, because right. you have C1 times V final plus C2 times That's V final. That's the charge in each capa in capacitor. Each capacitor. Perfect. Right? Perfect. It implies, you can say now C1 V1 plus C2 V2 equals V final into C1 plus C2. Okay. Right? Okay. And with this, you can evaluate the final expression. Maybe yes. I'll just write that here on the side because sure. it's, yeah, I just want it on the same page. Final is C1 V1 by C1 plus C2 plus C2 V2 by C1 plus C2. I see. Okay. Right? Yes. So, again, now, uh, question is for any arbitrary value of V1 and V2, right? V1 greater than V2, of course. Yes. Here, where do you think this final voltage will be? Hmm. So, you had written C1 by C1 plus C2 as alpha. Alpha. So, then this is alpha times V1. That alpha part stays the same. V1. But this, the other one is 1 minus alpha times V2. Exactly. Okay. V2. So, this tells me that it should lie somewhere in between V1 and V2. Exactly. Right? right. The answer has to be between V1 and V2. V2. So, yes. Yes. If V1 <laughs> is larger than V2, it will be, the final voltage will be larger than V2 but smaller than V1. Exactly. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So, that's a uh, interesting. Mm -hmm.